Hey guys, so this is a $8.5 million, you heard me this right, $8.5 million game store or online vendor. They also do breaking, ripping ships, you know, what's popular and whatnot. And they just fleece their customers for $3.5 million in pre-orders. Now, how do people pre-order so much? I don't really know, but they took that money went on vacation, bought nice laptops, nice monitors, they bought car displays for their own home, not the card shop. So clearly they're not reinvesting in the card shop because they want to bankrupt it and steal everyone's money. And uh, even beyond all of this, which is, you know, that's already really, really bad, right? I mean, these are already bad actors. Well, they're just uh, continuing on buying Rolexes and, and so on. They really love Rolex. Uh, criminals love Rolexes because they're very easy to sell. They have a lot of resale value, just like Magic the Gathering. Um, they're, they're, they're similar to any cardboard in reality. So I've been following this drama, and it's pretty wild. It is very wild, not but not for the reasons you think it is. It just shows you, like, a partnership. So he, he entered a partnership with a criminal. There's actually a criminal as part of this enterprise, and... The criminal surprising everyone did criminal things this time. And this is going on in Hong Kong, so I feel very safe in talking about it because these are very, very bad actors and they have shown aggression. In fact, they have gone to a child daycare center to assert aggression. <laughs> uh, these guys are complete losers, man. I mean, I, I don't even know, man. I left a comment. Uh, and they didn't respond to it, but they respond to like everyone else's comments. So I, I guarantee you they know I'm covering this. And I guarantee you they can't do a damn thing about it. A damn thing about it. So back to the card bros. Uh, these guys are not doing well. Again, it's the, it's, you know, it's the tale as old as time itself. Hey guys, we need to pre-order. All right, everyone get their pre -order. Everyone got their pre-orders in. Great. Okay, we don't have any cards. Where did the money go? Well, I spent it on my vacation. Well, that wasn't cool. Nope, it wasn't. What are you gonna do? So here is the age-old time, right? The Meta Zoo exercise, right? Meta Zoo itself bankrupting right now. We're gonna try to get as much debt on the books as possible. Of course, we need to sell some original artwork, so we're going to need to sell some cards to pay for the legal fees to defend us in bankruptcy court, and then we're just going to bankrupt, and everyone's going to... So you know what other store do you use? It? Mark's Cards, Clutch Cards, right? They all do these pre-orders. Now, Mark's Cards did a million dollars, so maybe 3.5 million isn't crazy. Mark's Cards sucks, man. Uh, Mark's Cards, a bunch of losers, did a million dollars. They collected over a million dollars in PSA fees. They then kept all the money. They paid themselves a salary. They pay, The guy paid himself a salary. He paid his brother a salary. He paid his wife a salary. He paid his brother's wife a salary. They paid the brother's fr wife's friend a salary. Well, when you are a small card shop starting out and everyone's getting close to 100K, they're making like 90, 80K as a beginning card shop doing no work at all because there's no submissions, right? They're, they're not able to submit at the time. So they're doing zero work. Well, and then you look at Clutch Gaming. What's it called? Clutch Cards? or clutch, clutch, It means probably all of them, right? All of the above. And you look at a card shop, uh, a physical card shop this time, well, I guess Mark's card is also physical. And they collect a bunch of pre-orders. And then right before they close, and then they close. Does that sound like MetaZoo? That sounds like MetaZoo. And, you know, these are the TCG Con. Again, they advertise these giant payouts. Everyone came for these payouts. People won. Sounds like MetaZoo. Sounds like MetaZoo. Some dude won $50,000. And then guess what? They didn't get paid out. So, I mean, this is not only illegal. Uh, so I don't know why MetaZoo is able to do that because that's a bait and switch marketing tactic, which is illegal, which, you know, I hope the government investigates these companies. Typically, they do investigate companies that bankrupt. But, you know, what is going on here? So this is... I feel very confident in speaking very, very ill about these people. They have no idea what they were doing. 
They got lucky. They scammed a bunch of people, including game stores with huge orders. I, okay, so I understand where the money came from. It probably came from all these game stores in Japan, and they got like giant orders of cards, like immense orders from Japan, right? They're probably making 10, 20,000, 40,000 because they're card shops. I owned a card shop before. When you make orders, our minimal order a month is 5,000. That's our minimal order. And uh, we can always order more than that, of course. But and, and at different tiers, we get better pricing on the same exact product. Yeah, man, I, I love this story. I love it because uh, I can say as much shitty things I want about these people, and it's not a damn thing they can do about it. Uh, I mean, it's it's. It's the story of the modern card shop. It opens, it looks new, it feels good, people are very excited. It runs its business for long enough until it can pretty much accumulate a few million dollars in pre-orders or PSA grading submissions, which were not paid. It then has a very unique way of paying itself, which would be... Um, you know, obviously you can buy Rolexes, you can buy Pokemon cards... You can go on vacation. You can buy a lot of things on the business credit card. Hey, hey, man, you might even pay all, all. You might even make every family member. You know, I got a two week year baby. Maybe I should just pay her, make the CEO of my company and give her half a million dollars. Right. And that money would funnel to me. There are, I mean, that's what Mark's cards did. He just paid in this entire family, even though they didn't do shit. Right. And then the money probably got returned to Mark's. I mean, you talk about the amount of scammers in the card industry has just multiplied beyond, like, you know, here they are at the little kids center, right, trying to bully. And the guy in the black is actually, uh, the guy in the black t-shirt and black shorts is actually a criminal. They look like criminals. They act like criminals. They are criminals, right? They are literally, literally one of them is actually a criminal. And now you got uh, the blame game. So you got the guy, and so the guy in the bold guy, the older guy, he is a partner of this. And he is, as in my opinion, as responsible. I don't think he would deny this because he said this a few times. He's as responsible as those guys. Because when you're a partner in a company, you run the company, you are liable for the company legally and ethically. So if the company does something bad under your watch and it happened and all this happened under his watch, you are in trouble. You are in a lot of trouble. Again, I'm, I'm going to just try to make this uh, very, very easy to understand. This happens a lot, but many times you cannot talk about it. I can talk about this because they're in Hong Kong. It's not like they can sue me for anything. Uh, they wouldn't dare anyway. But it also is a, a very interesting ongoing issue because there's different type of laws that apply in Hong Kong versus in the U.S., in Hong Kong, the laws are actually much more severe for this type of deception. So the risk is very high. You might be like, oh, why? So this dude has no understanding of like logic. He's like, why can't you just return the money? Mother effort, the money's gone. It's been gone. You know, like if the answer was as simple as just refund all your customers and you don't go to jail, the money is gone, dude. It is gone. 